Hi, how are you? I welcome you to this session. Today, our focus is on parental overprotection. Maybe you're wondering, what is that? Can a parent overprotect the child? Yes, parental overprotection is loving your child so much that you prevent the child from experiencing any unpleasant situation in his or her life. I'm going to describe a few scenarios for you to understand what parental overprotection is. The first one, you're a mother. You have a seven month old baby and you have just breastfed him so he is satisfied. You have changed his diaper so he is comfortable and you are aware that he is not sick. But when you put him in his crib, he begins crying. So what do we do as mothers? We don't want the baby to cry. So we pick up the baby and carry him wherever we are in the house doing our household chores. So the baby learns, when I cry, my mommy will pick me and carry me as long as I want. The second one, your child has just started school. And you know what? In school, there is homework. So instead of letting your child struggle through his homework, what you do, you first complain that the homework is too much. Then you go ahead and give him answers to the homework. You don't let the child do the homework by himself. So you have prevented him from struggling while doing the homework. Another scenario which is very familiar, you go with your child to the supermarket. And what has, does he do? He throws tantrums. He has seen this item and he really wants it. So he throws tantrums. So, because you're so ashamed as a parent, what do you do? You buy the item that the child is requesting so that he can stop throwing the tantrums. So you appease him by buying the item that he wants. What about this nine-year-old boy in the school? Well, although he is nine years old, he's not able to make his bed, he can't wash utensils, he can't even wash his school uniform. Why? Because the nanny does everything in the house. So the child does not know how to perform the normal household chores. Another scenario, a child now is 12 years old. She's a girl. And as a parent, you've been called to the school. And you are told that your daughter is peddling drugs. And you say, no, it can't be my daughter. I'm a pastor. I've raised this child very well. And apart from that, the child not only sings in the choir, but he leads praise and worship team in the church. So how possible can this be? So you have an argument with the head teacher trying to explain how impossible it is until the head teacher gives you evidence of the drugs that the girl was caught with. What about this 14 year old son? Well, you are called to the school by the head teacher and you are told that your son started a strike in the school. And you wonder how can my calm collected boy actually start a strike? So you say no, it's not possible until the head teacher produces evidence of a CCTV footage. So these are just but a few examples of scenarios that explain to us what parental overprotection is. So you may wonder, what are the effects of parental overprotection? Well, research shows that parental overprotection is detrimental to the child's development. The first thing is that the child learns to manipulate the parent because the child knows that the parent will protect me when I'm accused in school of doing A, B, C, D. The mom or the dad will say, no, this is not possible. I know my child better. So the child learns to disobey not only the school, but later in life, 
they learn to disobey the authorities in the society. So what we are saying is that the child ends up being indisciplined. Apart from rebellion and indiscipline, the child becomes irresponsible. And they also lack the necessary life skills that are required for them to succeed in life. For example, your child may not be able to do no more household chores like we said. They are not able to make their beds, not able to cook, not able to wash utensils, not able uh, to clean the environment in which they are living in. And what happens in life when they are in campus? They are not able to do these uh, small duties. From my experience, when I was going through my undergraduate program, and when you were out there posted for teaching practice, I had a student friend of mine who were posted in the same region. And we were fourth years by that time. And the, child, the student asked me, how do, you, how do you cook rice? Because I've tried and I've failed. Can you imagine somebody is around 23, 24 years old? They're out there in the field and they cannot cook rice, which is one of the simplest meals to cook. So that happens because they were not taught at home. So what else happens because of a parental overprotection? The other one is lack of making decisions. The child ends up not being confident in making personal decisions. And you know what? This affects the child even as an adult, even as a mature person. We've all had incidents of people who are married, but they cannot make decisions until they call their parents to approve those decisions. Why? Because they were overprotected. The parents made decisions for them. So you may be asking then, what is the way forward? Well, I recommend three steps. The first one is let your yea be yea and your nay be nay. So if you have said no, please stick by no. If it is a yes, stick by yes. And maybe I can give you an example from my personal experience. When my children were growing up, between, they were around between four to eight years old, I knew the issue of buying items in the supermarkets could be a challenge. So what I used to do with them, I would agree with them that this is the amount of money that I have. So Joy, you are having 200 shillings. Meshach, you have 200 shillings. And Mercy, you have 200 shillings. So when, you go to the, when we go to the supermarket, pick items worth that amount. And you know what? They learned that resources are limited. They would actually go around the supermarkets and pick items equivalent to the amount of money that I gave them. And therefore, I did not have issues to do with tantrums. Therefore, parents, let your ye be ye and your nay be nay. Your son, who is an adolescent, may not like it. He may lock himself in the house and stay there for a whole week without talking to you. But remain focused. Remain by your stand. Let your yea be yea and your nay be nay. The second one is give age-appropriate responsibilities. Household chores are important for training children in responsibilities. So depending on their ages, give responsibilities. And the last one, the last one is allow your child to make mistakes. Don't make all the decisions for him or her. Let them make decisions, fail, and learn from those uh, decisions that he or she has made. And in this way, they'll be responsible for the decisions they make in their future. So that is what parental overprotection is. If you liked this video, if you feel it is informative, please subscribe and share with your network. If you'd like more information about how to raise children in the best way possible, please go to their website and place an order for a copy of the book known as The House. I wish you all the best. 
God bless you and see you in the next one.